50 years. The Honda Civic is half a century old now. It's hard to believe. It's in its 11th generation. I was gonna call it a legend, but that's a different model of Honda, but it is an icon. And in an icon in its own right is the Type R. And that's what this episode is all about. The new, everything we know about the Type R Civic, the FL5 as it's called. I'm Johnny Smith. Welcome to The Late Break Show. I'm not very good at civic numbers, but I'm gonna try my best. The first Type R, EK9. We didn't get it in the UK. Second Type R, EP3. We did get it in the UK, we made it. Third one, FN2, yes. The one that has the engine that's going in my Austin Allegro project. I'll put the link above if you don't know what I'm talking about. The one after that was the FK2, is that right? FK2. And then the most recent one is the chaotic looking FK8. This, the FL5. Don't ask me why, I don't understand those numbers. So you probably already know that the 11th generation Civic comes as standard as a hybrid, but not in Type R form. This is still very much a turbocharged, you know, K22 litre engine. We'll come on to the engine in a minute, all that we know. Design-wise, this 11th gen is a much, much cleaner beast. And thank goodness, because there was a lot of lumps and bumps that were totally false on the uh, FK8, and I, it annoyed me. I think it was an amazing car to drive, but it just looked a little bit too kind of like kid's toy for me. This addresses that. So you've got these lovely cut-ins here, but the specific Type R elements at the front end is a real vent in the bonnet, which presumably is to draw out all that turbo heat because the turbo is situated about here. And then we've got a slightly redesigned lower front grille here, which accesses what I believe to be a larger radiator than before. Now there's a lot, I mean this is in championship white and I think there's four different Honda colours. You've obviously got the sonic grey, pearl grey, crystal black, black, racing blue, blue, solid rally red, red. But there's loads of black detail which I think is really, really, is, accentuates the decent parts of the Type R. So yeah, this is a larger lower grill on the Type R and that's to get more air into what I believe is an enlarged radiator area. And then that's obviously for the heat to come out from the turbo, which is up there. Again, real. There's a lot of real on this car rather than faux that was on the previous car. When you come round to here, you'll see that there was a vent before, a fake vent on the back of the front wing. On this car, it's real. I can get my fingers in. And that's to pull air away from the wheels. This kind of sculpted in black mask is not generically Type R, but what is, is obviously the badge. What's cool about that is the type the word type is black, the R is red, and there's a load of red in there, like a lot of red. It's good though, it's really good. So again, this profile shape, it's a lower, wider car in general, this 11th gen Civic, and all the better for it. You've got subtle things like, you know, the shape of the, the gutters and stuff's different, but that's not Type R specific. What is Type R specific? is this sill. See the black gloss extension on the sill here and this is an actual fin. So a diffuser effectively to push the air out and over the back wheels there. And the track is wider because it's a Civic Type R and you really notice that especially from that dead head-on front end shot here. So the arches are a bit more ball bulge but again they're not ridiculous. This design again is different on the shell. This A pillar is quite thin and it's pushed back and this mirror is pushed back here. And there's two creases on the bonnet that you'll see more when you're in the driving seat, which Honda says helps to position the car on the road. But this is what interests me. So the previous uh, Type R that came out in 2017 had really, really similar wheels to this one. Uh, you could get them as 19s and then 20s, I believe. This is 19s, but they're not the same being Honda obsessive with the minutiae. This has a reversed step. So the step that was here on the previous model is actually on the back now. So subtle differences like that. Um, slightly wider tire as well. These are Michelin, these are Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's, 265s, 26530 The two piece Brembo discs are the same. 
Uh, so same brakes as the outgoing car. They haven't said whether this car's lighter, but I would say, looking at the stats and things, it's gonna be a lighter car, the outgoing car, and have more power. So, slightly wider track, same brakes, real functioning vents, look. No fake nonsense, which is great. And then let's have a look at the back, because there's a big wing here. I forgot to say actually, that big back arch is moulded in to the door, which I think is a tyre par only feature. But the back end of the tyre par, there's a lot going on here. For a start, and this was interesting, I thought, um, the rear torsional rigidity has been increased by 15%. The tailgate is resin, which is not a tyre par only feature, that's all 11th gen Civics, but this is tyre par only, which you might have noticed. The previous Type R had this really, I think, quite ugly kind of plastic hoop. So this wing is actually suspended by these die cast aluminium stays. There's a lot of sort of fast and furious early 2000s going on here, but it looks so much better than the previous one. Uh, Honda says, in fact, that it accentuates um, the lower wider stance, which is true, but it does increase downforce. 92 kilos of downforce at 200 kilometers an hour over the old Civic apparently so you can definitely feel it's shaped on the inside especially and that floats above this sort of fastback deck here which has got no real little bit of a lip spoiler here and a rear wiper i like that move down and this is where it gets interesting again this rear diffuser is quite a big one and it's fully incorporated when you look underneath into this flatter under tray in the car gloss black and inside that like the last car you get triple tail pipes but I believe that now you've got the big one in the middle and the two smaller ones whereas before you had two bigger ones and one smaller one in the middle in general the new Civic has got a more high strength uh, steel on the inner shell the bonnet actually I forgot to say is aluminium on this doors are steel of course this is resin tailgate I think the thing about it is to me is it's that it's that cleaner less fuss it seems to have more confidence and everything that's here you get the impression it really is functioning and kind of like doing its job rather than just thrown on it which is what the last car was a bit about now all civic type R's for a long time now have been five door and this body shape is is no different this is the only shape of civic type R you're going to get in here though a really good sized boot, and my favourite bit, again, it's not Type R specific, I know, but I thought I'd bring it up, is this sort of roller blind parcel shelf. I just think simple, but really, really handy. And that's the thing about cars like this. They're not just fast, and they're not just agile. They're actually seemingly very practical. Okay, when it comes to the powertrain of the new Type R, we do know that pretty much everything beneath the skin of it is, is evolution rather than revolution. So the car visually is very different, but the, the main guts of it are an evolution. And we don't know the exact performance figures of this car yet. We don't know the exact power output, the acceleration, that hasn't been revealed as yet. But we wanted to get beneath the skin of this a bit more if we can, the K20, the legendary two litre turbo. So I've brought an adult along who's an expert in type harness. And his name's Phil, and I'm gonna click my fingers, he's gonna appear. Hello. Now, Phil from Dream Automotive, if you might not know this, he's actually building the K20 Civic Type R motor that's going in my Austin Allegro street sleeper. If you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, I'll put a link above my head now. Now this, I brought you along, Phil, because I know you're deeply excited about mm, this. Very much, yeah. Um, they say there's a couple of subtle changes to this K20, and we were looking, weren't we? I've, I've, I've written a few things down, because the terminology's a bit odd, isn't it? It's different, it's different languages, translations, I guess. So it says it's got a slightly different inlet manifold set up. Yeah, which... so we can see that new plenum here, where obviously on the older cars where we were tuning, we'd increase that diameter. Yeah. So it's, it's intriguing in a way as to, to what this plenum is actually doing in there. Yeah. We can't see any waterways going through it, which is what we sort of suspected at first. Yeah. Um, but it just did... looks to be a plenum as such, just to hold a capacity of air. So it says here that there's a new two-piece water jacket 
So that's a different design around the Yeah, head. so obviously where we got the turbo that bolts direct to the head, yeah. um, obviously the manifold's incorporated into the head and the casting's inside there. So it'll be the waterways around that, that um, it, manifold around there yeah. that's actually going to be cooling it before the exhaust gases get to the turbo itself. And then the, they've said the rad is bigger. Yep. I couldn't actually see myself as to where it's bigger. I think it might be in depth. Okay. Um, but okay. there's certainly a lot more space from, from turbo to radiator that's going to help with cooling. There is. Especially with that added vent yeah. to then help extract some of this heat built up around here. Yeah. And the, the turbo itself, they've said, in inverted commas, a compact turbocharger with improved efficiency, a different number of blades. Yep. Blade shape is different and the housing is different. Yeah. So what are you reading into that? So I, I would just suspect it's very much going to be Honda's version of a hybrid, similar to what uh, Mitsubishi did for us previously with the MHI turbos. Uh, it was an upgraded turbo with different impellers, different blades, and it would just help response and the spooling of the turbo. So I think Honda okay. sort of looked at the market, seen what everybody else has been doing, and then just sort of brought that out on the new model. So with regards to, I mean, the K20 is a legend in its own right, yeah. okay? This engine is is a similar version to the previous. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. I mean, on the basis, other than you know some of the, the big obvious changes, yeah. it's basically looks very similar, same yeah. engine in a way. Previous powers. Previous power FK2 was 306, FK8 being 316, and I'm speculating that this is going to be around the 326 mark. So I think around a 10 horsepower jump on each model. I mean, we talk about these numbers over 300 horsepower, like it's sort of okay. It's a front-wheel drive. <laughs> family car it's still bonkers when yeah. you think about it isn't it yeah. big numbers and with um, your potential a wider track yeah increased grip hopefully lighter the promise is that it's definitely stiffer that's what they've said with extra yeah there's a lot of info on on how stiff this body is now yeah and again like like we're just going back to the turbo and you're saying about the wheels there it looks like honda have been looking at the aftermarket and seeing all these changes that people are making to the cars and then yeah. slowly bring them into the new models. Yeah. Which is a really cool thing to see from, from our point of view. Yeah. To now see this coming into open market is great. It's sort of a bit less manga looking, a little bit more mature is maybe not mm, the right word because yeah, it's absolutely. still going to be mad, I think. Oh, it's going to be a great car to it's, drive, it's, but it's, it's more of the, the subtle look, I suppose, now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's growing up a little. Yeah. So we reckon 320. 26. 326 perhaps. is our, is yeah. our bet. So zero to 62 prediction. I'm not sure on that one. Around, it's going to be in the five seconds, but as to where it sits in there, I, I don't know exactly. Yeah. So there we go. That's the engine of the new FL5. I remember the name. <laughs> okay. Outside of the Civic Type R, more subtle, um, more measured, should we say. Inside, wow. I think it feels not only a little bit more simple and more composed, but more premium. Everything has a little bit better uh, feel to it than the previous car. Let's start with the redness, shall we? There's a lot of red going on here, a lot of Honda racing red. Uh, red seat belts, like an MG Metro, if you're old enough to remember those. Uh, very red carpets, like a Peugeot 205 GTI. Not a bad car at all. And these seats, these are new, these Type R seats. They are, they've got different supports, even more supportive than ever before. Uh, polyhedral shape design apparently one thing that was pointed out to me is that these side bolsters have been kind of chamfered off so you can get in more easily but there's still a huge amount of side support for when you're smashing times around the nurburgring and thus creating so much g that you might get a nosebleed but it's okay because the interior is red so you won't notice one thing i do really like about uh, the type r is the fact that this console here is real aluminium you've got the polished a gear knob which we've seen on on other type r's which i do really like it's very very ergonomic and then you've got aluminium here on the grill which is not type r specific this sort of like um don't know, what would you call it hexagon shaped uh width, full width vent and within that vent again another good touch especially for people that really kind of are into the whole type r collectability and stuff is a little plaque which will have your number of car on it i believe that's pretty cool in the back of the type r as I said before, that Alcantara material, high grip, according to Honda, is continued throughout, but it's not red. Back here, it's black with red stitching, and you get your red matching belts. The interior feels extra special with that red carpet and stuff like that. These seats, you've got Type R back here, as well as embossed on the front of the headrest there. There's no plastic cladding here, this is fabric. Just think it kind of works better than the previous model. It all feels a little bit more premium purposeful that's what it is purposeful it's about the package 
Anyway, to get a second opinion, I want to get the sorcerer in, Phil. It's the Type R wizard, he's back, Phil. Phil, I just wanted to get your opinion on the split lower squab. Yeah, I'm not it's, too sure the reason why, I but- I quite like it. It's nice, it, it makes a nice change to the seats and- High I'll, grip, high grip fabric yeah, apparently. Yeah. In the front well, room. It feels supportive. It feels really And this, supportive. this certainly helps in, in getting in and out of the car there. Just not rolling over the bolsters each time because that's yeah. something that the previous models suffered with quite a bit. Well, you so drive an FK8 every day. Yeah. So you'll experience the I know that, yeah, day in, day out, yeah, 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 yeah. What else are you thinking? So this, this individual mode they've introduced. Yes. So you've got... I really like the fact that we can personalise that now. For the fact that previously we had just the three modes that we were stuck on, so it would be the Sport, Plus R and Comfort. Yeah. It's now with the, with the three of those, but then you can actually personalise. So we can have the difference in the steering, the suspension, mm. and hopefully we're looking at the valve on the exhaust. We hope that we can then also get some sort of adjustment on that as well. Phil was climbing under the car with his camera phone light on, looking at the exhaust valves to see if he could see any solenoids yeah. in there. And Which is, it should be quite exciting because obviously if it's got a valve as standard, anything that we do to it afterwards just yeah. brings a bit more theatre yeah. to the whole situation. One thing it does see, because it's got a completely digital dash binnacle, is when you put it in plus R mode, this all becomes a little bit more red and ferocious. Yeah, yeah and, and a lot more data from what I believe, like yeah. once we look into it, but I believe there's a lot more engine temperatures yeah. and pressures that we'll then be able to display as a driver. Yeah. And you can see, again, just sitting in the cabin where it's a lot more driver focus. It's all within reach of the driver, just off the steering wheel. It is. So quite like, ergonomically pleasing for you. And it's, I know it's not a Type R thing, but for me, it's that balance of not having everything in in, in a touchscreen like so yeah. many cars. It's, there's still physical... You need a couple of dials there. There's still yeah, yeah. good quality rotary yeah. dials of stuff you actually want to access without faffing. Yes. Makes a big difference. And again, just driver focus, because it's a quick touch of that where you're not, like you say, faffing with the screen. Yeah. 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 Do you know, the, the, the biggest problem is, is because this is such high grip fabric, I can't get out. <laughs> you left it for the day yeah it's yeah. like someone's just sort of spray mounted me yeah. yeah we've just fired up the ignition so we can have a quick play with the infotainment and stuff on the R Phil's immediately found the logging system yep Go quite on. interesting there so obviously on that logging system you get all all that data coming up but yeah. we can actually save a lot of this back and then I, I presume download it off of the car and review some of that data that's uh, cool. You might even be able to do it here. I mean, it's log management, but there's not actually any logs stored in this one at the moment. So you but could do track day, couple of laps, come in, look at your own data. Effectively, yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. So when I press the plus R button, you can see this all goes a bit more um, serious. The RPM line at the top there, is, and above it, you might not see it now, but there's um, some lines here, some LEDs uh, for, your, for your rev limit. And then you've got some of the data that you had there yeah, so down here. When it goes into the R plus mode, it automatically pulls the data that we've just looked at on the screen there onto your main main dash. Whereas in I think in your other drive modes there, it didn't yeah. have that. Yeah. Love the fact that in a world where an awful lot of hot hatches or hyper hatches, whatever you want to call them, have gone pedal shift. We're still on the manual box. We're still on the yeah. uh, three pedals, we're still on the H gate, yeah. which is great. And a, and a night. It, it's the, all for the driver, and that's what a lot of Type R experience has been about is driver focused yeah. and, and the feeling of, of, of the Type R. Yeah. Now, we were talking about exhaust um, exhaust resonation. Valve on the back, yeah. yeah, and we're talking, there's a bit of sound synthesis coming into the cabin, we reckon, for this car. Yeah, too. so there, there's definitely sound coming into the cabin, but I was interested to see if we could actually adjust the actual uh, the valve itself when we go into our, our personalised mode, yeah. whether we can have that valve held open or closed or, or whatever point. But Right. Okay. So right. you've got. Yeah, so this is, this is the same sort of screen as what we saw on, on the last um, settings page. Yeah. Just with the graphic on it. But yeah, we can change the, you know, the throttle response of the engine, likewise with the weight of the steering and the suspension reactiveness. Yeah. But it doesn't look like, other than engine sound, I believe that's what's going to be generated into the cabin. But right. let's give it a start up and see what happens. So if you then put it in R mode. Well, I'll give it a sec, because it's probably on cold start idle for 20 seconds or so. Yeah. You think it might open up something? Individual. Oh. So, so you, see if- Then you put the engine, oh, so it is in comfort. So it's in comfort now. 
or R plus. Maybe it has to be over a certain so RPM. So it's just, it's just coming off a cold start idle now. Give it a little tickle on the road. <laughs> Maybe it's got to be up to work in temperature. Maybe, too. yeah. Yeah, perhaps. I'll stop it before we gas ourselves. All right then, Phil. Mm. As someone that lives and breathes Type R's, yep. it's driven here in the previous version. Yep. You've had a good nose round mm -hmm. the FL5. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that has disappointed you? This one, it, it'd be a hard one, really. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm overly quite impressed with the car. Um, sort of knew, in a way, what we were coming into with the fact that it's going to be the same engine or sim similar suspension as well. Yeah. Um, the only sl slight gripe I've got would be maybe the adjustment on that valve on the exhaust. Um, if we could get adjustment on the drive modes, but I suppose we might find out if that would be throttle based once we start driving the car. But yep. um, initially, that's the only thing I can really pick up on. You prefer the look of it? It'll grow on us. It's you know yeah. it's, it's a change, and I think from my point of view in, in the aftermarket, once we start seeing some lip spoilers and stuff like that come in together, then. It'll come into its own new set of wheels. Yeah, yeah. But you're, over, you're over already the, modified. I'm already it. there. Yeah, and that, that's the great thing with the fact that it's the same, to, similar to the old platform. Yeah. a lot of parts are going to interchange. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's the exciting times ahead. It's, it's so it's like impressive. it's revolutionary visually, evolutionary, yeah. mechanically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas the last tyre par drove brilliantly, but I think it looked a bit embarrassing. What they've done with this one is they've changed it again. And that's the thing about Honda. You can say what you want about them, but they'll always try something new. As soon as I can drive an FL5 tyre par, rest assured that I will. What do you think about what you've seen in this video? Let me know in the comments. Maybe you own one of the previous tyre pars and you're quite precious about the tyre par. Has this lived up to your expectations thus far? Apparently, it's set a Nürburgring record, although we don't know the numbers of that as the time of me putting this video out. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe. Maybe you want to become a Patreon. I'll put the link in the description below. Maybe you want to buy some merch, late break merch. Again, I'll put a link in that description. Goodbye. <laughs>